Broadcasting live from the little town of Clara, County Offaly, it's What's the Story with Lloyd Bracken. Get in touch today through all our social channels and have your say. Oh, and thanks for listening. Now it's over to you, Lloyd. What's the story? Strongman Keith Marr got the parade in Clara off to a spectacular start. 3,000 people turned up to watch Operation Transformation star Alan Mullen lead over 70 floats from throughout County Offaly and the Midlands. The Tonta fire-eating show from Athlone raised the temperature for the crowds, while the Clara Town Band entertained in front of a large community attendance. Hi everyone, very welcome back to What's the Story with myself Lloyd Bracken. This is episode 2. Thank you very much for the positive response to episode 1 last week. It's much appreciated. Now I don't know about you, but when I hear parade music like that, I always think of one man. And I know you do too. He's a great Clara man, and currently Clara Person of the Year, and he's with me now. Bertie McMahon, what's the story? Thank you very much, first of all, Lloyd, for uh, putting me on your programme. It's my pleasure to be on it. Thank you very much. Bertie, you're a very proud Clara man, a man from the green, and as I said in my intro, you're the current Clara person of the year. What's it like to be recognised by the people of Clara for a town that you've done so much for? Well, I suppose lots of people maybe have done more, but uh, that's my second time to get person of uh, the year, and I was absolutely thrilled. It's lovely to be recognised. First year I got it was back in 1985, uh, he's sick. And that was the first year I got it. It was run by the boys and girls club at that particular time. And it was a tremendous honour to get at that time. But this time topped all. I was absolutely delighted with it. And uh, it was a great privilege. Uh, and thanks very much to the local town band who ran it. And uh, I was absolutely delighted Brilliant. with it. Yeah, you hear the Clara Town Band there in our intro, which is a great band in fairness to it, and, yes. and it's brilliant to have them in town. Bertie, take me back. What was it like growing up in Clara, especially in the green? Well, growing up in the green, there was some great times. I, the green estate was a wonderful place. I can recall various things in the, in the, in the green itself. Like if I, It comes back to, I think, about um, hunting the ran now. On the ran estate, the Feast of St. Stephen. And we'd all be out and the green would be full and there'd be various people from Moat and Everton that had come to the estate. And we'd all be there. Then on a, we'll say on a, a Christmas morning, we'd be out, of course, Santa Claus was at arriving and we'd all be out with our little cap guns, bang, bang. And it, it was absolutely outstanding. There were golden times. Of course, the another thing that was there was the Claret uh, Streamstown rather, line was right at the back of the houses. And of course, that time there was various films with John Wayne and various characters like that. And uh, we we'd go out there and we'd see the train coming, and we'd land. We think we're going to rob the train, and you know sometimes we jump onto it and we go the whole way to maybe Streamstown, and we might get a a, a couple of clatters off the driver then, <laughs> and we'd have to walk back. <laughs> the sound, green sounds was, like a bit of an adventure your childhood, Bertie. Yes, we did. We had great adventures. I, I remember growing up with the O'Briens and the Duns and all those people. People and we we were really let's say we loved one another. We had great times together, and that which I've indicated went on. And sometimes, even speaking of the railways, there was the banner line as well. And we often, I suppose, it's a tough thing to say, but we met from school often on them, and got on to the train. Maybe we go to banner. We'd hide in in the side of the boundary, and we come back in it in the evening. I suppose it was daredevil stuff, all right. Your father died quite young, I believe. That's right indeed. And, and you know, I can absolutely remember it well. It was the 19th of July, 1953. Sad, a very, very sad day. And my dad at that particular time was only, what was he, 44. Just gone 44 in January and he died. And I remember that day he collected the money and all in the chapel. He collected, uh, you know, he went round with a plate and that. He got Father Minnock's blessing. And I used to always say to Father Minnock, Father, God's sake, don't come near me. 
<laughs> Dad went off so quick. But I remember him calling me in from the river that day. I was kicking a football. I could nearly reconstruct the whole thing. He called me in. We were going up to me Aunt Lizzie's up beside your grandma's. and um, Bowling we, Terrace for Bowling people. Bowling Terrace, yes. And we were going up there and... Um, it just, I got three steps up the stairs and I heard a bang, gone. And not alone was it so hard on me, poor old mum, that she had lost uh, two twins, I had two twin sisters, Annie and Mary, and they had died just after birth. Of course, I blame myself again because I was out on a three wheel bike and it was election time, 1951. And I smashed up my arm and my dad had to bring me in along with a doctor. It was Sherry that was here at that time. He was deputising before uh, Dr. Corby came. And they brought me into hospital. They were going to have to amputate the arm. And my dad wasn't home till all late. And my mother, my mother got so excited and upset that she, uh, she had the kids. I think the word for it is premature. Okay. And the one he lived a matter of days. And so a, t- a tough time indeed, and especially in the 50s for your mother. It was indeed. And my, my poor old mother was so kind and good to me. And I was a one wild man. I I, I, I don't believe you, that for a second. Oh, my God, I tell you, if your grandma was here and your granddad, <laughs> I could tell you stories. But uh, my mother then went into Upton House and worked there. And, of course, then I... Uh, I went to school in, in to the Franciscan Brothers and that, and we had some great times there to be hurling football and all sorts of crack there as well. But um, the one I, I always felt that I was I was that little bit wilder than the others, you know. Okay. I I, I would do one. I fell in love with a travelling girl one time. Lovely. And <laughs> of course, the priest came after me. That that time, the clergy, the word from the clergy, that was dynamite. If they said you can't do a thing, you can't do it. That was what actually went on. So when I said to you, uh, I was a wild man. I was wilder than the average, we'll say. So, and you never married, Bertie. How did you escape that? Well, I suppose <laughs> I, I, I would have married maybe that character. I never married because I believed that what happened there was my mom, I was my mom's pride and joy, the child. I was her pet. And even though she loved me so much and that, I got in with various girls, but mum, it'd be always terrified if I wasn't home at night. Right. Because um, she'd be afraid I was killed. And I was all she had after losing me twin sisters and me dad. Right. And even though her brother and sister, two sisters, were living in the town, I was her pride and joy. You're a very positive man. Yeah, well, uh, Dr. Taff asked me one time, he was examining me, and he said, Bertie, he said, there's two things you will never die from, stress or heart trouble. Right. And he said that I really don't care about that. Well, I said, look at it this way, doctor. Every man that went out and got a girlfriend and got married and that has a better man than me. Because I, what have I to be stressed about? You know, right. I once... Once I'm happy and I'm going on well, I do a lot of reading and exercise and I still do exercise and all that. Do you, Bertie? I do, yeah. Do you lift weights? I, I lift weights, yeah. I, there was a time myself and the late Jimmy Duffy. He was a very great friend of mine, the late Jimmy from Ballina. And we could lift 16 stone over our head. Four half under was mighty. But I, I, I don't think I'd be able to do that now. But I, I still do weight training Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I do cycling then. I might do the track and that uh, across with the old railway line from Moat to uh, Streamstown or mm. that. And I do uh, a lot of walking and that. Were, were you uh, a sporty person in school, Bertie? Yeah, I like sport, but I would have loved to have played more Gaelic football. Like, I can recall the late Nob O'Brien and Ricey Scully won Leinster medals back, I think it was 62. Well, at that particular time, I would have loved to have been with them. But I never really got involved the way I should have, you know. I was always a sort of going after something else. I loved trains, for instance. My dad, and that speaking back on my dad, my dad brought me up to see these the old steam trains. You ever hear of them? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, I was I loved trains, and I always wanted to be a train driver. Never, uh, never too late, Bertie. It? it well, it's a bit late now, but uh, <laughs> would, would anybody out there get on a train with Bertie driving? Well, I don't think they would. Well, there's one thing: when I come to a tunnel, <laughs> tunnel I'd be fairly shaky. I'd have a little claustrophobia, I think. <laughs> Bertie, tell us about the parades because that's what you're most well known for in Clara. How did you get involved with that? A cousin of mine, a relation of my own, uh, Martin Malloy, 
and uh, Joe, Joe Kales there lived in the green and that. And we were working at Bopa at the time. And uh, there used to be a party for the kids at Christmas. The social tub ran it. The Wonder the Wagon was doing brilliant on the television. And this day we were going down home, myself and Joe Kales, and the late Catch Berry was with us. We decided we could have something before the actual party that it would give a great incentive for a, a, a great, you know, a great atmosphere. So we decided we'd go to Moat and we got this um, milk van, or drawn. And uh, we brought this back, myself and uh, John Bracken. He went for election a few times there. That's right. And we carried it back along with another chap there from Dyland. I think it was Daly chap. He brought the tractor and we brought that back, got the whole thing going and we had the first parade, 1976. I went in parades in the various circuses and that where they used to be, we'll say it'd be, you dress up in fancy dress and you'd have dog shows, cat shows. So I always loved parade. But the first one was 1976 and we continued from there. That was a Christmas parade now. Okay, there, there was Christmas parades subsequently after in Clara, wasn't there? Most of them, I'm not flying my own kite or anything like that, but most of them I was involved in. Yeah. I think there was only one I was in 1981. But there was various characters we'd done up, and uh, at the moment I'm hoping to do a, 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 a large DVD of the golden years of the Clara Parade. That'd be great, yeah. yeah. Bertie, what, take us through some of the challenges in organising a parade. Well, in organising a parade, it takes a lot. Take, for instance, the... The Christmas parade, what we used to do is we'd go up to the late Joe Collins' shed or that. We'd go up there and we'd make up a... Martin Malloy was a genius, the late Martin Malloy. And we'd, we'd go up there and we'd, we'd, we'd get the wagon done up and that. Then Martin would bring us up to his home, which was in Chapel Hill. And Martin would bring in there and he'd do all the puppets. He'd make all the puppets and we'd make other floats as well like the Santa Todd's with the slayers and all that right. and it'd be a lot of heavy work to get the Christmas parade going sometimes I often thought it it would be harder than the, the Patrick's Day but with the Patrick's Day parade how I got involved there was Mrs. Cyrus said one day Bertie would you not the late uh, Mag Cyrus would you not try a, a, a Patrick's Day parade yeah. so I got involved with Michael Pettit and um Tommy Dolan and a couple of them, and I asked them there would they get involved in it. So we started the first Patrick's Day one in 1983. Right. And them trees that you see in the green, there they were a few of them planted on that occasion. And you won't believe who held the umbrella over the Paris Priest head. <laughs> Michael Pettit. So I heard to you, Michael. Heard it here now first. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But it was tough work, yeah, and it, yeah. It, it always was heavy going to, to keep it going. Is it harder now with insurance and all that? Well, it is because people like now, is it, 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 the last thing now, you can be caught with insurance. And if you have a big, a large claim or not, your, your insurance is going to go sky high. Mm. And then you're depending on, we do get a grant now and that. And then you're dependent on the local uh, businesses and that. And they have, a, you know, a fair play to them. I would say compliments to them because they give out maybe 150 a piece and they yeah. give out more in the past. And they do help out towards having the Paddy yeah. Stay Parade. And I visit various functions like Balnus Law Fair and various uh, other places. And what I do there is I contact bands and get more contacts, even up in Donegal and all around. I actually love the parades. I, do you? I don't know if there is another place if that put me in charge of the like. Here's a question now from some of our listeners. The first one from Roy Cronin. He wants to know what gives you the motivation to keep doing what you're doing with the parades? Well, I hadn't much luck in my life. And as I said, I had a lot of uh, ups and downs with the law and that. And I, I felt that by getting there and seeing people, the, seeing the joy on people's faces, yeah. seeing kids so happy with what I, and saying to myself, well, look, Bertie, you've done some good. Was it was it odd this year with no parade to organise? Yes, indeed it was. And, you know, I, 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 I felt very sad because I had the monies and all collected, which is there for hopefully next year. I have all the monies, to, uh, any donations I got, church gates and all that. I have all that money put together and that money will be used to run the parade next year. It's the 50th anniversary since we won the first football final in 1971. 
and I'm hoping there are various bodies there from that. That's that something look, to look yeah. forward to, everybody. Yeah. Another question from Linda Rock. This is probably a difficult question, Bertie. Mm. It's what's your favourite moment from all the parades? Well, my, my favourite moment, I, I enjoyed every one of them, and indeed Linda's daddy. It, we, I, I pay tribute to him now that Linda has asked that question. I, uh, Jerry Rock, uh, the lot of them, we were, we were a big team together. We loved one another. We, we hadn't one argument. I'm so proud to say I had never an argument with Ricey Scully, Jerry Rock, none of them. I think of them every day. My favourite one, if the Christmas one, would have been the 1988 one. It was a fantastic one. And my favourite moment was getting, when I seen the RTE cameras coming up to town and see the cameras, RTE row on it. That was, that was, that was drove a tear from my eye. Losing my comrades then were the saddest, I'd say. Okay. You, know. you talk about RTE coming and They came for many years then. Like RTE was one of the, the first people to come to Clara. You turn on the 6-1 News at Paddy's Day. A lot of the times you'd see Clara. Well, that's right indeed, yeah. And uh, I remember back, I spoke of my great friend Martin Malloy. And I can remember back in 1977. And uh, RTE sent a chap over from, from he was a, a lad done with the camera work. And he came over from uh, Atloan. And he fell in. We had a little bit on the evening news, but nothing like the what we're getting now. Bertie, when, when I think of the parades in Clara, there's always three people that comes to my mind anyway. Mm. I don't know about anybody else, but yourself is one. Mm. Uh, Pat Welch is another one. Oh, yeah. And Paddy Dolan. Paddy so, Dolan, no, indeed, yeah. You know, another man that I do think of an awful lot. And you know, Lloyd, speaking of those people now, I, I'll give you a rundown in a minute, but speaking of often and I coming home, I was coming back from somewhere late at night, I think of my great friend Paddy Dolan. Pat Welch was a great character. He was a character. Pat Welch went back to the Tops Carnival in 1957 and he, he ran with a barrel up the town, rolling it up the town. And he'd be there for every parade and he even stood up all night before the Lambert puppeteer her came in 1988 guarding the stuff for us and he'd say look at you're all right Bertie don't worry I'll stay here. Pat was a great man for the fancy dress wasn't he? Pat was a great guy he dressed up in Santa Claus he dressed up as various characters. Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy he'd done the whole lot of them he was he was outstanding. I tell you what you know what we do we have a little clip from Pat Welsh here yeah and it came from an old radio station in the Green years ago, Radio Green, yeah, that was yeah. organised by Porrick Morn. That's it. And uh, Taron Dalton was very good to share this with me earlier. Bertie, mm -hmm. let's have a listen to Pat Welch talking about his mother. Mm -hmm. The times were pretty bad. It's when my mother used to have for me when I used to come home from school was uh, potatoes and, and an egg. I used to go to the cupboard then when I used to feel hungry. I used to take out margarine. And my poor mother would say to me, Pat, where's all the margarine gone? Well, said I, mother. I got some of it and I put on some bread. I was very hungry. She turned around and said, why didn't you wait for me when I come home? Mm -hmm. She used to walk down and carry down the main street for a long, long time. She walked in back, it's as well. Now, Bertie, that was the late Pat Welsh. Well, indeed, it's a pleasure listening to his voice there. Yeah, it is. I, I have him on um, some photographs of him there and he dancing with uh, late Joe Minnock. Wow. You know, and the dancing below in the mill house. It, it's uh, it's lovely to have that, Lloyd. It's nice to have. Thanks to Taron Dalton for giving us that. Almost she dropped certainly, him up yeah. Today. What I, year was that, would you think? Yeah, I think it was around 91 or 92. Yeah, he was... Because uh, I grew up in the green myself. Yeah. And I remember Pat years ago and kids, we'd be playing in, in the right. green field. And right. Pat, right. sometimes you wouldn't do anything to Pat. And he'd go, I yeah. call the guards. Yeah, he'd go guards. mad, you know. But he was a great character. One, one of the he, true characters, legends around him. Well, I, I have a... Um, uh, I have uh, characters that were in the, the green and in the town of Clara at the time. Uh, there was the late Tommy Jones. We used to call Tommy Jagger and he'd murder us. <laughs> and um, we had uh, Packy Slammon, another great character. Peter Rochford, Mikey Connor. Now, that'd be Ollie and uh, their father. He was a great character, uh, Mikey Connor. You had Jack Clammon who rang the bell, the chapel bell. And you had John the Butcher Clammon, we used to call him. You had an excellent musician or a magician in Tommy Wright. 
Uh, he was out with the green. Jim Fahey, we used to call the weatherman. And, of course, Jim Paul and Tommy Harris. Now, they were tremendous yeah. characters that were in the town. But uh, Clara is famous for characters and music and everything, isn't it? What, what made Clara so special with characters and... Well, I don't know. It was always a music town, as far as I can uh, remember. I, I remember uh, uh, McFadden's Roadshow and various roadshows coming to the cinema and the uh, parochial hall. And you'd have fellas like your father was a great, he's, he's one great character. <laughs> it, I, I love Paddy Bracken and the players, <laughs> and I'm not when he said that, because he'll always say the Lachie Corps, whatever. But... Uh, you always had people like that, and they'd go into, and McFadden had run, we'll say, for instance, a roadshow. Now, I don't think you remember them. No. A roadshow would consist of a variety part first. Then you'd have the players like the Kevin Barry, Noreen Vaughan, various things that and it finished with a sketch. But they used to have, um, they used to have uh, people coming up and talent competition. And you'd have loads of people. You'd never be short of Clara. Clara loved music. They had, they had three bands one time. Would you believe that? Oh. They, they had a fife and drum band, they had a pipe band, and they had a brass band. And they had them, and uh, excursions would go from Galway to, uh, or go to Galway and Bray, and the band, one of the bands had always travelled with the excursion. Right. Factory excursion and the mill excursion. Yeah. It, it, Clara was a place that loved music. They loved entertainment. They loved a bit of crack, and of course, even at that particular time, they used to go to the it'd be the crossroads Stanson at the crossroads, and they'd, uh, they'd have a dance there at the crossroads. It wouldn't be much traffic or that, yeah. and they'd have a dance there, and maybe an old boar down and that, and there'd be a dance and musicians there. Tell us about the the carnival and the circus. Well, uh, the carnivals and the circus were outstanding. I I remember nineteen fifty seven. We had a wall of death here, and of course, the late Patrick Brannan was mad to get up on the motorbike and the wall of debt. <laughs> and we were all following him in and we were mad to get him up there. And we actually, I, 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 I think he went round at once, but we, he was our hero, you know, at that particular Brilliant. time. And uh, they came there and had a tremendous show on. I think the GA ran it. But the circuses, what I mostly remember about the circuses coming, there was the strong man. Now, I mentioned to you there that I'd done a lot of weight training and that. Mm. And I always went in there and had a go at it. Would you and take the strong man on now, Bertie? Oh, I'd, I'd still have a go at it. I, mm. I, I'd never fear me. That's one thing. I'm not going in to be a brave man or anything. But I'd have a go at it. I remember one time, the great Arco, and he got me to lift this uh, bar, but I, I couldn't hold it. I didn't hold it. And I think it was a tenner or something we're going to get. But <laughs> yeah, I used to take them on and I'd, I'd have a go at them. And I loved that. And yeah. that was a, not to not to show them up or anything, but just I loved that type of thing. I heard somewhere I don't know whether this is true. You can tell the people at Clara now mm. that you once nearly joined the circus. I did indeed, yeah. As a matter of fact, I travelled with Mike Fadden. If we go, just bring it in this way. Mm. I travelled with Mike Fadden with the road shows over for Ban and Banner, uh, Bally Mahon with the Courties and all them. But as regard the circus, yes, I was mad to actually go with them. I loved to be able to take part and do something in that. Show business is always my life. Yeah. And I loved it. And to the day they put me in the box, yeah. I'd always love to have that. I'd I done various things. I'd go in if there was a challenge or whatever it would be. It didn't have to be the strong man. It could be and get up on a horse's back and it swing around it and you'd stand up on the horse. But to be a lad tied out here. Right. Speaking there of great guys, now I mentioned uh, Tommy Joe. Before the circus had go on that evening, Tommy would go around with a bell. They used to call him the town squire. He go around with a bell, ringing the bell, and uh, telling you all about the circus and various things like that. No, I wouldn't be over religious now. Speaking of religious things, uh, I speak there uh, about the mission. The mission had come to Clara, and we'd have to go to be a week for the men and a week for the women. And of course, the missionaries used to be roaring and shouting and giving out. And I remember on one occasion, he shouted about, Would any man marry. Uh, I suppose a girl will be in a nice way. A girl of loose moral, morals. <laughs> and uh, I remember that man, Jones, answered him, said, No, father, I wouldn't anyway, because I'm not a fool. We laughed, myself and Paddy Toohey, and uh, who's it, Noel, the late Noel Dunnigan, and he pulls out of the chapel. And uh, I went to the man, another night he uh, was on saying about the eternal fires of hell. 
And he was saying, you, you, and you, and he stopped at this man. And this man said, look, we're sick talking about fire. We're running out of fire. But I laughed and I enjoyed it. You asked me there, would I, I be a religious man? No, I wouldn't be an over-religious man. I, I would say prayers and that at home. I, I would believe in a God. But overall, yes, I, I, I have great time for people's belief. And I, 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 I respect people's belief. Yeah. And I'm not saying there is nothing. But I'm saying that I wouldn't be an over-religious man, no. Okay. Bertie, tell us some, tell us about your working life. Well, I worked in various places. My first job I got was with uh, with a man that I, I adored. He was like a father to me. Uh, would have been uh, Martin Plattery. Yeah. And with Martin, that was doing, delivering the turf now. And I mentioned there about weightlifting and all that. Would you believe when I went in there, I was hardly able to lift a bag of turf. <laughs> and Martin took me on, gave me the job, and I worked with Martin, and it was a pleasure to work with him, and his wife, Lily, was very good to me, and he even went to, to, over to the, what he got, Loch Innell, and we go over and do this, well, I wasn't great swimming, but he'd bring us over, and we had a great time. I worked with the late Paddy McGrath as a gardener above at Upton House, and I worked in the mill, I, I worked on the stone crusher one time, throwing in stones above there and stones isn't that uh, I worked with Borden and Mona work, I was with be a Borden I worked as a milkman I worked as a salesman with a Dublin company actually I have much hair now but if you look there you'll see where I had a transplant done wow yeah I worked with them and uh, you had a hair transplant I had a hair transplant I, I, I didn't actually and I still don't and I don't make any bones about what I didn't particularly like baldness that doesn't mean I don't like you <laughs> but what I tell you um, I, I, at that particular time you weren't witted right. if you didn't have the brill cream okay. you know. All right. so I didn't have to pay for it if you paid for a birdie would you ask for your money back <laughs> I wouldn't at the time because I as I should have started there I went to there because your money go bald to there right. the rest of you I no, I, for, I, for anyone listening, Bertie is, is pointing out parts of his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. I'm just pointing out like uh, that. I, I like that. I would never be ashamed to admit that. Would you be a vain person? No, not really. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't think so at all. But I, I love doing things like that. Yeah. And you look at talking about things. I only started dancing when I was in my late 50s, 60s. And I started dancing. I was sitting one night in... Uh, in a shop there in Lochna Valley was the name of it, and they were dancing and they were doing the Siege of Venice and all those. The lad said to me, would you like to be able to do that party? I would. Of course, I seen the woman part of it. You, you know, you could chat to women I hadn't that. And uh, I started learning dancing then in Moat and, of course, over in my second home, I call it, in Ratton. Right. And I, I love dancing. I love being involved in things like that. Yeah. And uh, it was my whole life to stay I had now and I... I'd love to stay at as long as I may have a anyway. Bertie, I heard you're a great man for impressions. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know a few of them there, like, and... Uh, Come on, Bertie, I, I you have, uh, you'll have to give us one or two now. I don't know. Uh, the, the late doctor, uh, uh, PJ Corby, when you oh. went to him, <laughs> I used to go into PJ and... Well, what can I do for you, he said. Well, you know I have that myself. You'll have to get yourself and pull yourself together. And if you don't, you're in big trouble. <laughs> and then we had another, we had Tom Rigney. And Tom Rigney, Lord have mercy, my, I'd be killed for doing those. Tom Rigney used to say, I wonder if it's such a great idea to have praised it all. I think he said, maybe we hadn't. We wouldn't be in as much trouble. <laughs> and various ones like that. And, and, uh, that's um, brilliant. Tommy brilliant. Jones used to, uh, used to say, I'll see Patrick Willis and the sergeant of Ochi now. You keep calling me names, they go near me. I done uh, down in, um, where was it? Down in Roscommon. The big Tom was down there. He's nearly his last ending up. And Margo was there. And uh, I, I, he's called me up because... Uh, myself and uh, Boher Planigan uh, went up to, to his place one time. We were in the area, and Boher said to me, Will you come in? And I went in, we knocked at the front door, no answer. We drove into the yard, and he said, You're just as easy there, says the Boher to me, of course. And I went in, and who are you, says Tom, and his wife Rose was there. Well, I said, You told us one uh, back in, uh, you told us that wherever in uh, the area, 
to call in to see you. When was that, he said. That was 1980s today. <laughs> but God, he said it took you long enough to come there. But uh, speaking of him, at that day, I got up on the oak, and he says, you remember you'd done a, an imitation of me, and uh, I, 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 so you do a bit of it now for me, and Margot was there standing with him, and I done it. By the side of a clear crystal fountain, there stands a lonely churchyard closely by. There's a tombstone decorated with primroses in the memory of my loved one passed away. And she used to sing, Oh, I love you, Tom. I want to be beside you. And she says, can you do me? So we had some laugh that day. Bertie, me? I never thought I'd hear Big Tom and Raheen and well, Margo at the same time. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know all that type of What's Clara like now compared to what, when, what Clara was like when you were growing up? Well, uh, Clara is a different place completely. At, uh, at when when I was growing up, it was different. There was, there was more shops in it than what you do then is you'd maybe you get your few things during the week and that, and you'd pay for it the weekend. But there was lots of great shops in it, and uh, they were fantastic. And not alone, like at that particular time, uh, people were, you know, you'd meet a person, you'd have a chat with them, and you know, and it was tremendous. Like, and I used to go round with uh, Silver Circle. And you get a few bound for doing the silver circle. I used to do Telemore. I did do Clara as well. And I'd go into the various shops and all. And you'd always be welcome. But there was always full. And even if a Monday morning, you'd see Carey's was a lovely place. You'd see it full up of uh, people. Right. And they were all there. And uh, to be having a few drinks, maybe sore heads after the weekend or right. what. They might be on ship work. And uh, it was fantastic. And there's another thing, Lloyd, I'd like to mention, is the, the various historical places there was in the town. We had St. Bridget's Abbey in Kilbride. We had the Mass Rock at uh, Ballinot. And we had uh, the, uh, uh, or the Rock of the Pond. Now, speaking of the pond, that time we'd all go up on a summer's day and we'd, um, we'd go up there and there was various tubs. There was a the big tub and a small pub. And you could go round and you could walk round the big pond. Another uh, thing that people don't speak of too much, there was a muck chapel. It was called a muck chapel, mud that was made of. Oh. And it was above at Ahamore. Now, I spoke earlier there about St. Bridget's Abbey, but this was across, up the, the side of where Frank Stone's living now. Right. You go down along there, close to the bog. And I think the trouble was, at that particular time, that there was the red coats and various things and... If a priest was saw saying mass, he could be brought out and executed. Wow. But there was that chapel was there, and look at uh, our genie. It 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 was great, like to, where the people held their faith. Mm. You know what I Bertie, to you'd, be, you'd be a great tour guide. Would you ever think of a new career in Clara? Bertie's tours? No. <laughs> well, I, I I love Clara, and I I love I hate anyone running down Clara. It's lovely. I've said to you and we on our way up there how delighted I was to see you doing this. Mm. It's fantastic. I would, t I'd love to help out with a tour or with anything. Yeah. Another place I wanted to mention, mm. I'm worried about those places, very worried at the moment, is the factory chimney and the mill chimney. Mm. And I'd love to see a group of people, I'd go with them as, if they could do something to preserve that. They'd have to be checked for safety and all that. Any regrets in life? Well, I suppose there again, when I look at people with a son and daughter and all that, I, I think of myself and I think how lovely it'd be there to have a family. People have said to me, weren't you lucky? You have no troubles. You never, like that John Tapp saying, you know, you're the only man I ever met that has no no worries or mm. no uh, anxiety in any way. Mm. And I say I could pay the penalty yet. Do you worry about being on your own or? No, I, I, I was never really a nervous person. Yeah. I don't worry and I don't have any, um, I don't feel lonely. Yeah. I, I, well, you have I, a lot of friends. I have a lot and of friends. current Clara person of yeah. the year. Ollie O'Connor is one of my best friends mm. and Joe Cornley. And I, I have other ones, Andy Cunningham. I have lots of friends that, uh, that I, I, and those people have provided me with dinners and everything throughout Brilliant. the time. Some nice trouble. people. Yeah, they're lovely, yeah. Bertie, uh, we're going to do a quick fire round here, okay, for people to get to know you a little bit more. Is yeah, that okay? Yeah, sure. 
I know you're up for anything, so yeah, yeah. it's ten questions. Right, play you have away. to answer them as quick as you can. I will. Go ahead. Okay, it's no stalling now. Right. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah. Right, Bertie. Here we go. The first thing you'd buy if you won the lotto. New car. The best thing about being from Clara is that I'm proud of it with the people, the people that's in it. What actor would play you in a film? Mr. Sellers. What's your favourite TV show? Uh, the Quiet Man. Yeah, Gayborn no. or Ryan Tuberty? Uh, Gayborn. First movie you've ever seen? The James Brothers. Favourite part of Ireland? Favourite part of Ireland, Clara. Donald Trump or Barack Obama? Barack Obama. If you could have one act in any of your parades, who would it be? Barack Obama. It'd be in it, and I'd love to have uh, more circus uh, uh, things in part. And the last one, Bertie, if you had one wish, what would it be? Well, the one wish I'd have to be, is, I have at the moment, is that I last another five or six years to gain all I want in the parades and do Clara proud, so that when I'm leaving it and going to the place beyond the clouds, that I people will say, well, at least he done some good. Well, absolutely, they definitely will say that, and Bertie. All, I, all the joy you give thousands of people down to yeah, the years. And I must pay a compliment as well to Johnny Scully, Andy Cunningham, and those fellas that got me involved in indoor football and all that, mm. and Noel McCarthy. I, I think it was a great change about for me. Bertie, one of our last couple of questions. Um, there's a lot of people listening in America, mm. uh, Abu Dhabi and Australia and everything. A lot of people abroad, are, they might be under commute to work now. They might be on the subway in New York and, and they're listening to us now. You yes. know? Hopefully they are anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Not giving out about us. Yeah. What life advice would you give to the younger generation now? People people abroad or whatever. A man of your life experience. What well, what would I give them? I'd say the one thing and I feel that I missed out on myself. Get proper education because when you have education you have no it's no way to carry but you can be independent and I'd say to them believe in yourself be proud of yourself be proud of your family and take what comes but make sure that you're on the winning side that's lovely Bertie Bertie on behalf of the people of Clara we'd like to thank you for working tirelessly over the years to bring enjoyment to thousands of people from all over the Midlands and indeed from all over Ireland and thanks very much for coming in for the chat Look Lloyd it was a pleasure to come up here and I must say that before I, I close off as well that uh, your grandma and granda were such wonderful people Thanks a million. I can still smell them lovely uh, apple cakes cooking for me of a Saturday There you go At a great time And on that note thanks Bertie Th- Thanks Thank very much Lloyd and the best of luck with your endeavour Thank you very much town of Clara where the brass and the waters glide. You just listened to What's the Story with Lloyd Bracken. Check out all our social channels for info on new episodes. Oh, and thanks for listening. On the town.